we are moving to our VIPs. So, Mr. Sunim, we also selected some of uh, your book readers and some of um, public uh, figures who ask questions directly to you. For the first is Greece from Less Journaling. She is also a bookstagram and she has reviewed all, uh, all three of your books. Please, oh, Chris. thank you. Hi, Mr. Hanum Sunim. Thank you for writing this book. First of all, I've read so many self-help books, but your gentle and non-judgmental approach stands out for me. So I think your book is truly a comforting read. And I appreciate how you balance like useful self-insight, uh, self-help insights with the importance you remember. It's like you reminding us, or me specifically, the importance of taking care of uh, my relationship with other people. So thank you so much for writing this book. I have one question for you. You explore themes about self-acceptance, self uh, self-discovery, and uh, for those of us who have people around us who is uh struggling with denial or inability to take even small steps forward, what advice would you offer to us so we can be a good or an effective support system to them? You are talking about for those who do not have any ability to take self-care? Yes, uh, they actually uh, know what they need to do, but it seems like there is us always a wall preventing them for taking the steps, for taking the action. You know. So uh, what can we do to be a better support system for people like that? Okay. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, I think it's very important to take good care of ourselves physically and also emotionally and spiritually so that we can provide, you know, a good help to other people, you know. So when only when we are healthy, only when we are strong, we can also help other people. Um, so I think it's essential, you know, for us to take good care of ourselves. Um, it is that taking good care of ourselves is not a selfish, you know, uh, it's, people often think that it's, you know, especially while if growing up, if your parents says, oh, don't be so selfish, you know, think about your younger sisters or younger brother, you know, and you cannot do this, you know, you cannot eat this or, you know, then you, you associate, uh, you know, taking care of yourself as, as an act of, you know, selfishness. But I don't think that is the case. Um, only when we are, you know, well enough and happy enough, then we can actually make other people happy. Um, one of the easiest way I believe for self-care uh, is rather than starting with your mind, which is, you know, kind of hard to do, why don't you start with your body, you know? So I say, you know, one of the best way, I think the most important, you know, elements for self-care is sleeping, you know? So go to sleep early, <laughs> you know? Go to sleep early, like, uh, you know, 1030, you know, something like that. And Give yourself plenty of time, at least like, you know, seven to eight hours a night. You know, if you are sleeping only six hours as opposed to seven hours, then there is a higher chance to feel, you know, uh, easily irritated. You'll feel very easily irritated and um, you will, uh, there's more there's a study that says that you more likely you will start eating, you know, uh, snacking, all this unhealthy food, uh, and you will make a you know decision that is maybe not uh, um, not really uh, serving you, you know, so well. So I would say that you know sleeping is number one. You know, th this is a key issue, right? And then, and number two is maybe you know having a nutritious food, you know. Uh, something that your body will thank you uh, is rather than eating junk foods, uh, you know, try for something really healthy and nutritious, fresh, you know, fruits and vegetables and nuts, you know, uh, whatever that's, that's going to make you feel uh, really healthy. And so spend some money <laughs> and, and, and energy and time to cook and, you know, treat yourself, you know, for a good food. And then um, 
third thing, you know, is of course exercise. It, you know, uh, if you can just regularly exercise, then you will not feel as you know lonely or depressed. Uh, just by uh, regularly exercising and start having muscle, you will feel uh, much more uh, confident and stronger. You know, uh, not just physically but also uh, mentally too. Uh, so I would start with your own body, you know, I would advise that person to take better care of your own body uh, for the, you know, self-care components. Um, and then uh, if there are some, um, some emotional issues, you know, then of course it's good idea if you can afford it to uh, find a therapist, you know, psychotherapist, and then talk about your own issues, you know. Uh, they are trained to listen to you, uh, whereas your friends may cut you off, you know, in the middle of your, uh, your you want to talk, you want to talk about what's happening in your, you know, in your heart, but your friends, uh, they are not trained. So they will may just cut you off or try to uh, give you advice that is not very, you know, helpful. Uh, so, uh, I would advise if you can afford it, and then you know go see a you know, psychotherapist and let you let your whatever that uh, emotion that have been you know you have been bottling up to let it come out. Uh, and the, another way is just writing down, you know, like writing therapy. You can just start writing down uh, what's really you know going on in your mind. You may think you already know, but as you are writing, you'll discover, oh my gosh, I have all this emotion, all this feeling, all this thing, you know, uh, bottled up. Uh, so you might, you know, be surprised, you know. So like writing down your own emotions. Uh, and the good thing is no, nobody's going to look at your own writing. So you can be really, really honest. You know, you don't have to worry about uh, whether somebody's going to read it and judging you, you know, judge you, nobody's going to judge you, right? So you can just write it uh, how you feel, you know, how you've been feeling it. Um, another way uh, for me is uh, dancing, you know, if you can dance <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, or uh, it doesn't have to dance, just, uh, you know, moving movement, you know, bodily expressions. Uh, when you feel, you know, frustrated or angry, uh, it's all stored within our body. So some parts of our, you know, muscles are very stiff. It's not flexible, partly because we've been repressing, you know, that area, you know, the disappointments or anger, frustration, it's all stored physically in our own body. So exercise is a really, really important, but also, you know, listening to a really nice music, your favorite music, and dance as though nobody's looking at you, you know, <laughs> and that's, a, you know, another uh, excellent uh, way to release, you know, your uh, emotions uh, story. And another uh, method is also uh, through painting. Uh, oftentimes, we may have, we may feel something, however, we don't know how to um, articulate, you know, through language through words. So for that, you can actually paint whatever that, you know, feeling you have, you know, and then you'll be able to, uh, you know, slowly uh, reveal, you know, what happened, especially when you had a traumatic experience. It's very, you know, very much been, uh, it could have been uh, repressed and therefore it's very hard to say, verbalize, you know, how you are feeling. Uh, so there are many different ways to uh, express your emotions and, and, and or talk to your trusted friend. You know, if you, if you have a really good friend, good listener, non-judgmental, a kind person, then you can talk, you know, honestly and, you, you know, be vulnerable and, um, and be truthful. And then usually uh, what happens is, as you are talking about your own experience, you actually begin to see some of the solutions. <laughs> you know, oftentimes you already know, you know, uh, how, you know, the solutions, just that you weren't able to articulate, you know, but in the process of talking to your trusted friend, 
you realize, ah, that's what I, you know, how I felt. Ah, that's where, you know, I was stuck, you know? Uh, also your friend, if this person is very skilled, then you know, he or she can, uh, you know, push you uh, to, to, to a certain, you know, direction so that you can uh, go deeper and, and see the things that you weren't able to see before. Thank you so much, Mr. Hanusunim. I didn't see the dancing part is coming. <laughs> nice advice. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Grace, for your question. Next up, we have uh, Jimmy Ma from Suddenly English, uh, English Club Community from Belajar Lagi. So please, Mima, you can ask your question directly to Mr. Hanusunim. Okay. Good afternoon, Mr. Sunim. Um, really sorry for the noise. So I think I got a real life experience of when things don't go your way. So it's really an experience. So after reading your book, the things you can see only when you slow down, I feel like I found some answers to my questions. So I decided to start being mindful and slowing down. But the thing is, I always have the urge to be productive, to find more activities to do, and feeling guilty if I do nothing. So, Mr. Sunim, uh, I know it's not easy, but do you have any advice to make it bearable for me and maybe for some of our friends here? Thank you very much. Right. Like, you know, we, um, my second book, Love for Imperfect Things, actually do talk about something a little bit like that. Um, a friend of mine, uh, he was such a hard worker, you know, he just uh, continued to work all the time and he produced excellent work. He's a professor in Australia. Uh, so I went to see him, uh, you know, we were, uh, you know, friends uh, while we were working on our PhDs. And so I just went to see him and, and stay in his apartment. Uh, and he and his wife were so kind to me and nice. But I think, you know, his wife also mentioned that you know, he's overworking, you know, he doesn't take good care of his, his body or uh, sometime uh, doesn't, you know, go out or spend quality time uh, with his uh, partner or family, you know? So I would say that, uh, you know, the question is, uh, why am I feeling this way? You know, why is that I feel if, I, if I'm not, you know, productive, why do I feel guilty, you know? Ask yourself, you know, why am I feeling guilty? you know, for not being so productive, you know, and the, the chances are it, 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 have, it might have something to do with your uh, childhood, you know, the way you were raised by your parents, <laughs> you know, when you are not productive, maybe your parents, um, you know, label you, uh, you are not being a good person or, you know, you know, good studious, uh, uh, you know, human being. Uh, so you, you, you know, associate uh, the feeling of um, you may feel I'm not good enough, you know, just for being me. I have to prove, you know, to other people that I'm worthy of receiving love. The, but truth is, you are already worthy of receiving love, you know, just as you are, you know. Uh, you don't have to prove to other people. You don't have to win other people's love. And because while we are growing up, our parents, maybe uh, they, maybe they want, you know, our children to do well and thereby instead of saying, oh, you did a, such a good job. And they say, oh, okay, that was okay. But now I want you to do better for the next one. You know, you got 95, but next time, you know, get 97 or 100. Okay. You know, something like that. And, and so you feel like, oh, I'm like, you know, I did really my best, but, you know, my parents never validate, you know, my effort, you know, and therefore, therefore I feel like I'm not worthy, you know, I'm not good enough. So, uh, however, we as a human, like, a, you know, adult now, we can give the validations or love that this inner child, you know, needs. You know, what, what I mean is that uh, the little you know, boy or little girls, uh, you know, maybe five years old or six years old, you know, being a small child within us, 
who are desperately you know, wanting our parents' approval, you know, wanting our parents' unconditional love. Uh, and yet you weren't able to get that, you know, and thereby, uh, I, I, no matter what I do, I feel like, you know, I have to prove to the world to, you know, that I am, you know, good enough. Um, one of the, you know, ways for you to do inner child work uh, is actually, um, if you can, uh, like I, my cell phone, I have a, you know, photo of myself, you know, it's a little boy, you know, when I was like, a, you know, little boy when I was like, a, you know, uh, five years old, you know, <laughs> and I look at, you know, this boy, you know, I'm, I, and this boy was not able to you know, receive unconditional love, you know, and therefore I, as an adult, decided to shower this boy i'm not running away you know i'm here for you you know i'm not going to go away you know uh i'm i'm here to love you and i will always protect you you know i will always give you unconditional love to you uh so you cultivate this relationship you know from this adult person is taking care of this little child within you so um, cultivating this uh, relationship between, you know, inner child and also yourself, it can be, a, you know, one good way to repair this feeling of unworthiness, you know, feeling of not good enough. You know, I have to constantly prove to other people that I am worthy. You see what I mean? Uh, I'm, unfortunately, maybe you weren't able to receive that unconditional love from your parents, but I can do that. You know, I can give that love to my own uh, inner child. I hope it helps. Thank you. Thank you for the heartwarming answers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you Mima. Okay, for the next VIPs, we have Mas Iwet Ramadan. He is director of business MRA Media, the senior broadcaster, TV presenter, and communication expert. Hello, wow. Mr. Wet. Hi. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet Do you. you. Know how much I adore you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I was shaking now, but from the title uh, that have been shared, I think. You understand why I really love your books. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I mean, like the first book that I read, The Things You Can See Only When You Slow Down, it's really resonate with me. With all the titles, with all the hustle that I've been doing in this world, I think this book really helps me. And uh, I even have a podcast. And all of my partners in the podcast, he they like, understand when I say a quote, it must be coming from you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. So when, when I start, when I start the sentence from the book that I read and they will be like, okay, what's Mr. Sunim <laughs> said now? Okay. <laughs> so the things that I want to ask to you for okay. now. Mm -hmm. So you've talked, you've been, you've talked uh, to Mima about how we treat our inner child, inner child. Mm -hmm. and I understand that our value as a grown-up man, as a mature uh, person, is coming from what happened in our past during our child, uh, our 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 uh, child childhood. Moment. Yeah, childhood. I really want to know what are the most memorable memories during your golden age whether it's good or it's bad memories and how you deal with it according of course with the previous topic about the inner child how you deal with it that's my question thank okay you. thank you thank you um you know um you know, the, my like first chapter of this book, I do talk about, in, you know, uh, my own trauma. That is, um, as I was working on my own issues, uh, some of the trauma, traumatic experience that I had as a child, I completely, you know, forgot about it, but it, it surfaced. That is, um, I, I lost my mom in a big open market. 
And yeah. so I was very young uh, and I was very sad and, and uh, very scared too, you know. And then there was strange, you know, lady came and took me to her home. And I thought that I will be able to meet my mom, but I wasn't able to meet, see any of my, like, you know, no mom, just a strange, uh, you know, old man. So I ran out as quickly as I could and ran back to the market and I was able to find my mother. Um, so this like experience of, you know, this, you know, is like a scared boy who lost uh, temporarily the, the, you know, the sub in protections and and uh, you know con unconditional love and scare so much uh for his own survival um i i think it's important that we become aware you know of that trauma you know whatever that's we've been repressed and and yet still affecting us you know still uh, influ influencing us in a big way um, like, for example, for me, that has to do with my issue of abandonment. You know, mm. I feel so afraid to be abandoned, mm. you know, and I was wondering, why do I feel this way? You know, I like, it's not like I had any terrible, you know, childhood or I could not understand why I have, you know, this issue with abandonment. Uh, I was so scared, you know, afraid to be abandoned. And, and then I realized I was abandoned, you know, in the, in the market, you know, so uh, I, I guess it, once you become aware of the very source of the problem, then that's a you know big step uh, because uh, you realize that oh it wasn't my fault you know it's it wasn't in my own problems. Uh, I realized that I was conditioned in that way while I was you know very young, and then the 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 opportunity is uh, how can I repair this then then for me, it is to uh, seeing that photo myself, you know, at the time when I was um, separated from my mother and then reassuring this little boy that uh, you are always be protected and I am not going away and I love you. I'll be here for you. I will always take good care of you. Uh, so by telling this little boy, uh, little child, uh, and 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 continue to reassuring him. Uh, that was like one of the way for me to feel, uh, you know, much much, you know, you know, better and healed uh, from that process. Um, as for me, you know, like, but I do have a lot of really good memories. <laughs> and you asked me what's like the best. Uh, like one of the best is for me is just after you know coming back from school. Me and me and my mother, we would go to a supermarket, a, a nearby supermarket, and and it took about I don't know like a fifteen minutes walking together, uh, and then while we were walking to the supermarket, I would just talk. I, I, I talked about uh, what happened at you know at in my school, you know, uh, you know who did what, you know I you know I was I did well, you know school like you know that. My friend had this problem, that problem. Then my mom would just listen, you know, like, and this very gentle, great. yeah, gentle moment. Even warm my heart now. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. And then, you know, we go to supermarket and it's like kind of large, you know, supermarket it was. And at the time we were very poor. We are living in this small, very tiny one, one studio, you know, studio. And uh, we share the bathroom, you know, with the three other families. So we are really poor. But in that supermarket, I felt like I don't feel poor. You, you know, although, although all the stuff were not mine, but I feel like, wow, this is like, you know, nice, you know, <laughs> so, uh, and, but the thing was, my mom was always, you know, save enough money to buy us uh, snacks, so uh, I remember, you know, you know, she asked me, what do, what would you like, you know, and then I asked, oh, I want this and that, and then we would, you know, buy that and come home, and, and so having this, like, gentle, you know, time, just me and my mother, uh, and talking about what happened at you know, in my school, uh, that I think was my best memory. Can, can I have just, just a very short question? One more short question. Based on that story, so again, based on that story, is your love language is quality time? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, uh, let me. Yes, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Yuan. Okay. Wow. Such a heartwarming question and answer from Mr. Hyman Sunim and Mas Iwet. Okay. Next, we have uh, Irwan Wancha. He is from Mental Health Doodles. He said he has something to show you after he asked some question. So please, okay. Mr. Wancha. Uh, thank you, Kastia. Uh, hello, Mr. Sunim. Nice hello. to meet you. My name is Wancha. You can call me Wancha. I actually an illustrator and also a writer in Indonesia. I love to learn and also share about mental health. And actually, I'm a big fan of your books. Oh, thank <laughs> you, so, thank you. This one and uh, my question is actually about uh, since I am starting to writing contents and also making illustrations, and I share it to publicly in my social media and. I actually have uh, wrote a book too. Uh, have you ever felt like, uh, or have you ever faced a criticism that is inevitable that you have to uh, face about your books or about your writings or about your ideas and also your thoughts from people that might not resonate with everything or something that you have shared and how do you face it if uh, it was happened before mm -hmm. and uh, maybe a little bit of tips on how to stop uh, having that imposter syndrome because of the uh, confidence level of the low, uh, of the eh, by the comments right 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 okay. um yeah i think you know when uh, you put your work out there you know whether it's a book or music or in performance, you know, whatever that is, then um, once this become work becomes, you know, more, gain more and more popularity, and surely you will also have uh, more and more, you know, people who are critical, you know, of your work. Um, and so you may take their uh, criticism to your heart and feeling that, Oh, maybe you know, like I'm. My work is not good. You know, it's 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 not like the way they said. Maybe it's not good enough, or it is just too whatever. You know, um, but the thing is, you know, um, we all know that you know it is absolutely important, impossible to satisfy everybody, right? Uh, and the most important thing, I believe, is your own uh, motivations. That is, uh, what's your motivations? And my motivations, when I first wrote the book, when the things, um, things that you can see only when you saw that, you, I really wanted to help other people, right? So my motivation was helping other people. And so whenever people are criticizing my work, and at the same time, I also see a much higher you know, number of people who become very thankful and really connecting with my own work, um, then I ask myself, you know, am I doing my own, um, like, am, am I serving my own uh, readers? Uh, and am I doing it to help other people? And if I am actually truly doing it to help other people, then it th doesn't really matter, you know, what other people are saying, you know, because I'm being really authentic and true to my own motivation, you know. The, um, so, and another thing is, um, people will judge you, especially those who do not know you, never met you, you know, you know, people never met you, but they judge you in such and such a way. That has a lot more to do with their state of mind than your own work. You, you know what I'm saying? If they feel a lot of anger and a lot of you know, hatred, then the world, you know, they see around them is full of anger and full of, you know, hate, you know, hateful things. And, um, and like one time, you know, there was one guy who was just attacking me so badly. So I clicked and I tried to see how, how he responded to other, you know, people 
uh, because there was a function that you can see uh, what kind of comments he made. And I realized that he, he, the, you know, all of his comments were really nasty. You know, he was not doing it just to me. He was doing it to like 10 different people, you know, 10 different famous people. Like he was just, you know, being nasty, like really, you know, terrible and you know, finding faults in this person, that person, that person. And I realized, oh, that has nothing to do with me, you know? It has everything to do with the, his own state of mind right now, you see? Right. So you don't have to take things personally, you know, at all. Uh, and just check in with your own motivation. Why am I doing this, you know? Um, am I trying to benefit other people? And if it is, and if you are actually doing it, then, uh, you know, continue, be true to your own motivations, and continue to you know work. Um, I was told that uh, according to you know Western psychology, we tend to um, uh, when other people you know are doing something wrong, then we blame that person's uh, for their own uh, what's the word um, uh, integrity. You know that they um, like like let's say uh, I am. I throw away trash or something like that, you know? Then I would say, uh, if I saw somebody, you know, uh, throwing away trash in the middle of the street, then I will say, that person is terrible, you know? You know, we think that person has some problem. But if we are throwing, you know, some trash away and we say, oh, I'm not a bad person. I'm just in a hurry. You know, I don't have a time to look for trash can, you know? So in other words, we tend to um, forgive ourselves and, and looking at, put it in a context base. Uh, whereas the, for uh, other people, we think that is how, the, who they are, you know? We think of them in terms of their own character, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, this is another, you know, fallacy, you know, psychological fallacy. Um, so uh, rather than, you know, we just jump and quick to judge other people, the bigger question is uh, what kind of experience or what kind of situation is this person in which creates that kind of behavior, you know? We try to understand where that person is coming from. Uh, so when we understand other people, uh, lo and behold, you know, it is we feel who uh, much, you know, much better, uh, you know, we become more peaceful uh, and more forgiving rather than holding grudges and uh, feeling like a victim. Ah, thank you so much for the answer. I just uh, remember about emotional projection, maybe that uh sometimes the hardest comment at the harsh comments from others is not about us but it's more about them right okay uh before i ended my session i actually made a little a uh, gift from you as as Tia said before so please uh take it as a token uh -oh. of the for uh your book your third book launch in indonesia and oh, wow. hope you will like it and, oh, I love it. I love uh, it. Thank yeah, you so and, much. Um, job, yes. You know. uh, maybe you. I can send it through Periplus team. Yes. Oh, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and by the way, you. I know that uh, my book is in the process of being translated into Indonesian. And I think it will come out sometime this year. Mm -hmm. As far as I know. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I wish you can come to Indonesia soon. I love to. I love to. I so love maybe to we can to, you know, go to Indonesia. Offline. Yeah. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Estia. Thank you, Kawanca. Okay, next we have uh, Mas Didit Maulana, Creative Director of Inkat Indonesia and Entrepreneur Coach. Hello, Mas Didit. Hello. Hello. Mr. Sunim. Thank you so much, Perry Plus and Mas Happy for having me here. Oh my God, you know, like, <laughs> I'm a starstruck to you. Oh, thank you, thank you. I think like all the rest of this, uh, hundreds of people that are watching you, uh, feeling the same. So um, yes, uh, Mr. Sunim, it's such a blessing to see you here. And 
uh, to be honest, I feel so connected uh, with you and the book because it was started with the way that you were unfolding your um, vulnerability and then your difficult time. And I think um, that um, remind me, you know, like um, even uh, the Haimin Sunim himself, you know, like he has this... Um, fragile moment um and and it's you know like it's it's not over yet and then right. it's something that um made me realize that um yeah it's 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 happened to all the people and as we get more and more integrated into a digital world sometimes we just lose sight of the real world around us and um, living uh, with the remote control that we have in our hand, we start to be anxious when things don't go our way. And right. usually I feel it in my body sensations, such as um, a feeling burning in my stomach and then the feeling of tightness in my chest. And even though that I have read the book and all the book and all the theory, and even though we already know knows it, sometimes it is so difficult to apply it. So um, the question is, what is your suggestions of the first thing to do when those feeling arouse? Thank you. Right, right. I think thank you so much. You know, that's such a kind response to my uh, book. It's so nice, so kind. Um, Yes, I think, you know, most of us know how to make ourselves, you know, happier. You know, but knowing and doing is two completely different things. And just because you know, doesn't mean that you will be able to do it, right? So uh, I think you, we actually have to practice. And how do I, you know, need to practice? Well, we already know the how my body is respond, how, how my body responds to whatever the triggers, you know. Um, then whenever, uh, let's say, your heart is feeling like burning, you feel, you say the burning sensations, then at that moment, you become mindful as, aha, uh -huh, yeah, aha, uh -huh, yeah, something is burning. Let me, let me see, you know, uh, let me just, um, find out, you know, what's happening, you know, in other words, pause, <laughs> you know, like whenever there is like bodily sensation that, you know, that is responding to some kind of emotional issue, then you catch yourself, you become mindful, you know, of that situation by listening to your own bodily sensations. So whenever you have, for me, it's more like, um, like stiff neck, you know, my, my, this becomes very steep, you know, and then uh, I, or, you know, some people like their heart you know, start beating fast and then you begin to say, Hey, slow down. What's happening. You know, what's happening, you know? Uh, and so you become mindful of your own bodily sensations and through which you can become also mindful of your own emotional state. So um, I would first, uh, you know, lean into, uh, your own, uh, you know, bodily sensations and and being mindful of that sensations, um, then this will lead to much deeper um, uh, emotional uh, state that maybe uh, you want to you know learn more about. Ah, uh, okay. Wow, wow. So practice is the key, and then uh, by shifting your perspective. Um, while you were um, feeling the sensation and you can um, be the watcher and then the one who who see that. Uh, I think that is um, one of the key. Um, right. As soon as you become aware, ah, I have that sensation. Then what happens is it instantly slows down. You know, this awareness is going to just makes you feel you know, slowing down immediately, you know, right there. So, uh, you know, being able to catch yourself that moment, that's the key. Thank you so much, Mr. Sunim. I wish you all the best luck in the world so you can uh, write more and more books so we, uh, we can uh, share uh, and we can learn more from you.
Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mas Didi. Okay. Next up, we have Nabila. Nabila is from Baca di Surabaya, a literacy activity in Surabaya, East Jawa. Please, Nabila, you can ask your question directly to Mr. Hamid Sudi. <laughs> so I have the question for you. Uh, first, as a Zen Buddhist teacher and active writer, have you ever felt bored or find any difficulties to balancing this, these two roles at once? That's the first question. And the second one is after writing these three books, is there any desire for you to be able to write outside the theme or a topic of the third book, maybe a memoir or autobiography. Yes, that's my two questions for Mr. Sunim. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> what, what is your first question? Is that, yeah, two rules? What, what do you mean? Well, as a Zen Buddhist teacher and active, active writer, have you ever felt bored or find any difficulties in balancing these two? A writer and being a Zen gem, monk? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, um, not really. <laughs> I didn't have because, um, like you know, being a Zen monk, I it like it's it's a you know we are expected to teach, you know, basically. So uh, teaching can be done verbally, but it, it can also be done through writing. So I write, um, you know, twice. Uh, every month, you know, for Buddhist newspaper in Korea, and so I give out the teachings. And sometimes I find my writing much better than my talking. <laughs> you know, so uh, like because I can kind of you know uh, summarize and maybe make it tighter rather than just all over the place. <laughs> um, so I don't feel a lot of conflict, you know, in between being a writer and being a Zen monk. Uh, as for your second questions, uh, the thing that I'm really, you know, hoping that I could write is um, some kind of, you know, easy to understand, uh, like a story, you know, I, I would love to write a story, you know, about um, like a journey, you know, like of people who go through spiritual path. Uh, I think, you know, regardless of your own religious background, we are all, you know, spiritual in some way, and we look for whether it's God, Allah, or, uh, you know, Buddha, you know, or, you know, Krishna, or, you know, whatever that is, the ultimate, uh, and we, you know, look for it, um, and, and yet, um, maybe, oftentimes, uh, you know, what we have been looking for, is very thing that's been uh, waiting to be discovered uh, at home, so to speak. So I would love to write a book, something like in you know, Alchemist, to be honest, or you know, writing a book like uh, Little Prince. You know, something I would love to write uh, in a book, something like that. And uh, so, yeah, that's that will be my you know my future goal. You know. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Sun. I'm looking forward for your idea and yeah come <laughs> samida yeah. okay um next we still have we still have two vips yeah mr sunim so next we have kanya mega from jakarta book party uh jakarta book party also one of the biggest um book club in indonesia oh, thank Please, you kanya yeah, thank you. Hi, Mr. Sunim. It's such an honor for me to be here with you. And thank you, Periplas and Kahestia. Um, so basically, I have read cover to cover for wow. your books wow. with many notes <laughs> because it's very resonated with me. And thank th you. I want to thank you for being very honest and show your vulnerability. And that's what makes this book very relatable for me and I believe to many people as well. So yeah, for um, Jakarta Book Party, basically we have this kind of radical vision that believes um, everyone in every corner of Indonesia should have the equal opportunity to read books, especially good books, of course, that can enrich their lives. Um, also, in one of your chapters um, in your book, um, you mentioned about the small but certain happiness, SBCH. 
and you express that uh, you have a passion for discovering new insight uh, through readings or literature. And that's basically perfect, perfectly aligns with our mission as well. Um, so with that in mind, um, I want to ask you a question. Um, on top of your three books, of course, um, could you kindly share a list of books that you personally, personally cherish and really, really love and you consider it as a essential or must read for people to read and especially for people in Indonesia. And maybe um, you might wanna tell us about why do you recommend those particular books? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, you know, I really like, you know, Thich Nhat Hanh's book. You know, I don't know whether you know uh, the amazing, you know, Vietnamese uh, teacher, yeah. Buddhist teacher, Thich Nhat Hanh. I, when he came to Korea, uh, I, you know, interpret uh, his teachings to Korean language. Uh, but really, um, all of his book um, is easy to read, but, mm -hmm. you know, profound. If you really think about it, it's really mm -hmm. profound. Um, like, for example, he talks about uh, walk. Uh, do the walking meditation as though mm -hmm. your feet is, you know, kissing the earth. You know, we are like a walking, but rather than feeling just walk, you know, randomly without much, you know, any, without any, mm -hmm. you know, feeling, mm -hmm. uh, see if you are kissing your mother earth, you know, and, and then you're walking. Uh, and the, his idea of interbeing, how we are, uh, you know, interconnected, nobody is isolated, uh, mm -hmm. nobody is completely independent. Uh, we are very much uh, living in this web of the whole interconnected in our world. Um, so in any book by him, I would highly recommend. Um, and then uh, like one of my, um, you know, my favorite, you know, American Buddhist and author, uh, uh, her book is Radical Acceptance. Um, mm -hmm. It's a, uh, you know, like I used it for my, you know, uh, Buddhism class when I was, you know, professor in the U.S. Uh, uh, I really, uh, Tara Brock, you know, that's the author mm -hmm. name. Uh, she's a very well-known American Buddhist teacher. Uh, I really respect mm -hmm. her. And I gave a talk in her own uh, community in Washington, D.C. Uh, and so like, that's the one book that I would you know, highly recommend because she combined she used to be psychotherapist and she's also mm. a great uh, Buddhist teachers so for me uh, that's another excellent example where rather than uh, making uh, Buddhist teachings very dry you know mm. Buddhist teaching can be very dry and mm. and difficult to understand mm. but uh, you know if we can just apply to our everyday life and to show how uh, this different teaching can actually uh, benefit us in a very concrete way. Uh, I think that's the way um, I like the books, you know, that kind of books, as opposed to um, just book that, you know, explain dry doctrine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you so much Thank for you. the answer. Really insightful. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Makania. Okay, next, uh, last but not least from the VIPs is Safira. She is from literature, also a literary activity in Surabaya and Jakarta. So please, Safira, you can ask directly to Mr. Hamid Sunim. Hello, good evening. Annyeonghaseyo, Mr. Sunni. Nice to meet you. I'm Safira. You can call me Fira. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. And it was such an honor to... Uh, tonight to ask Mr. Sunim directly. So I often uh, find out that most of the people uh, I met uh, in my circle feel unhappy about the situations that we have, I have, they have, such as continuing to feel lacking and not feeling satisfied with all uh, our achievement and sometimes comparing them with the achievement of other people. Uh, my, que my question is, how would you describe the relationship between accepting circumstances and achieving happiness in everyday life? Yes, this is excellent questions, you know. Um, 
a lot of people are suffering, you know, from precisely this, you know, situation, uh, especially with the rise of, you know, like, you know, social media, we always compare ourselves <laughs> with our friends and, or the, you know, okay. So the happiness is not a absolute term, you know, it is always relative, you know, uh, what I mean is that um, if you can just compare, you know, ourselves with, uh, let's say, um, Indonesia, like 500 years ago or 1,000 years ago, right now is the best, right? It's like you have the best, uh, the medical system compared to 500 years ago or, you know, things are a lot better, right? However, we don't necessarily feel happier than our parents' generations or grandparents' generations, although things are much better you know, 100 years ago. Uh, it is because we compare ourselves to other people and then we assess, am I happy or not happy? <laughs> you know? So uh, the reference you know, point, you know, this person, whoever we you know, compare it to, uh, if we are comparing ourselves with somebody who is doing much better than us, then of course, you know, I don't find, you know, my situation acceptable or actually I feel very unhappy or even depressed. But if we are, you know, um, comparing ourselves with somebody who is less fortunate, then we feel like, oh, maybe I'm not that bad, you know. <laughs> but the thing is, you know, we, we rarely do this, you know, we always compare, you know, with somebody who is doing a lot better, as opposed to somebody who's not doing better, right? So because of this tendency to compare ourselves with you know, somebody who's doing a lot better than us, you know, of course, we're gonna feel horrible afterwards. Um, uh, one time, I think I talked about this in my book, uh, I, I put up the um, photo of uh, me in Canadian Rocky, you know, and I was, you know, climbing, I spent like five hours just trying to get to that top. And then uh, while going up to the top, there were a lot of flies, you know, a lot of bugs, a lot of bugs and flies always like, eh, 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 eh. so for five hours, I have to do this, shh, shh, shh. <laughs> like continuously walk like this, shh, 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 like this for five hours and then I got to that beautiful spot and I was hungry I was really hungry <laughs> and I already ate of the whole chocolate bars you know and you know, like an apple I ate them all so I was like really hungry and thirsty and yet I was like smiling <laughs> you know <laughs> if you look at the photo you know I look incredibly happy right and then anybody who saw that photo from my own uh, social media, then they would say, oh my God, this person is having a, the, you know, such a fantastic life. And I am here just sitting in my own home. You know, I feel horrible. I'm not doing it well. Well, the thing is, you know, you don't know, you know, whoever has this wonderful, perfect, you know, photo in reality, maybe they are showing only the good parts right? They are not showing the bad part, you know, difficult part, challenging parts. So, and, but funny thing is nowadays, um, did you know that anybody who watch more television, they tend to feel worse, you know, about themselves, you know, uh, if you uh, watch one more hour, you know, than other people, then you feel actually worse because we even compare ourselves to like unrealistic people like you know uh kim kardashian or some or or some uh you know like uh beyonce or you know like some somebody outrageously you know smart and rich and famous and successful even though we watch them and we know that their life is very different from ourselves but somehow we kind of like you know like compare <laughs> you see what i mean uh, anybody who looks at the uh, fashion magazines, uh, they tend to have, uh, you know, their self-esteem going down after looking at the, you know, fashion magazine. Do you know that? Because we compare our own body with the model, you know, <laughs> professionally photographed, you know, and then, and I'm sure it's a heavily 
uh, immortify in a photo, <laughs> but we are comparing ourselves with that. So rather than you know constantly comparing ourselves, you know, with other people, I think you know one of the better way to make ourselves happier is, as I say, um, gratitude. You know, and look for things to be grateful. Uh, one great way is to um, texting to yourself. You know, if you're using WhatsApp, you can actually uh, text to yourself, you know. And so whenever you feel grateful, uh, just write it down, text to yourself. You know, it can be uh, up to three or five things, you know, each day. And what happened is um, during the daytime, rather than we automatically look for something that is not right, you know, something that is pro problematic. Uh, you know, instead, we will start looking for something to be grateful, you know, daytime, you know. So this shift of, you know, looking for problem to looking for, you know, gratitude, this can increase our, um, you know, happiness level uh, quite a bit. And it allows us to feel much more um, in at peace, you know, uh, with what is already given to us. Uh, because when we are when we feel grateful, we are not you know wanting something else, yes. you know. Um, so gratitude is a you know great way. And the second one is um, you know uh, being kind. You know, as I say, like you know, one excellent way is volunteering. You know, I, every Tuesday you know, for me, Tuesday like a, you know five p.m. I always go um, to uh, the the uh, like, a, you know, like um, uh, there's a place where I can help, you know, feeding homeless, you know, the free okay. food, you know, I volunteer. And after, you know, working, uh, you know, I always feel a lot, you know, better, you know, I feel yeah. like my life has a meaning. I feel like while I'm giving the food to them, I wish them well, you know, as I'm giving the food to them, this becomes my, you know, spirit, spiritual practice. I want them to be, you know, protected. I want them to be, uh, feel happier. I want them to be uh, loved. Uh, so this sincere, you know, desire for them to feel better, this becomes uh, what happened. This becomes, you know, your wish, you know, it is your mind that wishing them to be happy. So yes. while you're doing it, your mind becomes very positive and very loving and very kind. And because of it, you feel so much better and you feel connected, you know, with those people around them. And your self-esteem goes up because you feel like I am contributing, you know, I yeah. am, I am not nobody, you know, I am somebody, I'm helping other people. Uh, and then another, you know, really unexpected, you know, good thing is while you are doing volunteer work, you connect, you become close to other volunteers, you know. So what happened as we are packing, we are just laughing. We, we talk about other things. We talk about like a little thing. Oh, the soup tastes like, you know, really good. And then, you know, little thing like uh, so we make jokes and we are like having a lot of fun time, you know. So like for two hours of volunteering, I feel like very much, you know, uh, like connected, you know, hanging out with my close friend, that kind of feeling, you know. So I don't feel lonely at all, you know. Mm -hmm. For all those people, modern time, when you feel lonely, just go out and, you know, see if you can volunteer. Uh, it's, you know, you will feel a lot, you know, less lonely after, you know, uh, working with other people, you know, um, because people are there uh, out of good heart and you are meeting lots of really good people there, you know, not a yeah. selfish people very uh, pure and, you know, kind people. And you begin to see that, oh, the world is full of really nice people, you know, because of your, you know, kind act. Um, and then the th third thing is, you know, savoring. Uh, just look for, you know, this little pleasure <laughs> in your life. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be uh, like I, like for example, before this uh, uh, webinar, I walked around my neighborhood and I saw like a beautiful flowers uh, they put in outside 
Uh, and then I was like, wow, this is so beautiful. And so I stopped and actually enjoyed the flower for like 30 seconds. And this very act of, you know, appreciating the beauty, you know, very act of appreciation uh, increase our happiness, right? And so you can appreciate the, you know, the beautiful aroma of coffee, you know? You can appreciate very kind words that your friends is saying, you know, you can appreciate, you know, good weather, you know, you can appreciate, you know, like a little thing. And as we, and then you can also say to your friends or family, I really appreci appreciate you for doing this and that. And that is good enough. You know, I feel like our lives is already uh, very rich and happy uh, when we are, you know, validating each other's and, 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 you know, saying very kind things to each other's. Thank you so much, Mr. Sunim, for the answer. Uh, yeah, I am totally agree with uh, what you say that I, my mom also taught me as a Muslim. My mom always taught me to say uh, Alhamdulillah in everyday life that we being thankful for whatever we uh, face today, tomorrow, yesterday. So we do not we do not have burden uh, to uh, to live everyday life to always feel uh, gratitude and always feel pleasures for everything that we gonna face uh, in the next day. Thank you so much for the insight. Uh, I'm trying to practice Zen living uh, from now. And uh, I hope that I can do better in everyday life, uh, in every... Uh, uh, I practice a lot of Zen living, uh, for example, is I'm trying to be kind, such as uh go to the nearest mosque uh in my neighborhood and uh give them some money to the whoever needs i feeling so uh be a better person of my first chance thank you so much mr zanim thank you samira so that's all the four the eight vips